and we don't want them flopping to the bottom. We want them. We want to. We want to be able to put six of them in, and and so they're tied to boards. And the reason their head is down is, uh, you know, if some disaster should happen, and it would take several weeks, quite a few weeks, if there's no liquid nitrogen. But at least their head would be the last thing uh, to be thawed out if if, if there was, you know, if, if there was some disaster that prevented us from uh, getting more liquid nitrogen for a period of over a month or so. Now, when they're in these vacuums, at the point they're in the vacuums, they have no heartbeat and they have no brain activity, correct? Yeah, they're, it's, and, and, you know, as they say, at, at that kind of temperature, when the colder things get, the slower, the slower the, any molecular motion is. And so, you know, it's really, they're almost, they're very, getting very close to stop. You know, that uh, you know, as you get down to you know, molecular motion and atomic motion virtually stops when you get down to zero. It's not zero Kelvin. I mean, minus um, minus three hundred seven, two hundred seventy three. But uh, anyway, they're um, they're at minus one ninety six uh, Celsius. I have another question. You know how people have been known to come out of comas all of a sudden? Okay. What if somebody woke up out of this as if out of a coma? Well, not they're not going to do that at liquid nitrogen temperature. There's no waking up of this uh, at that temperature. The, the, you've got to, to to wake up. You've got to have some uh, electrical and and, molec- and um, molecular activity in your brain and. And as I say, at that temperature, there's nothing is moving. You know, it's it's like you're solid as a rock. There's no there's no there's no motion whatsoever. You, uh, and the electrical signals uh, that that normally make give you consciousness um, just uh, would not be able to exist at that temperature. So could you say, I'm just asking you for your own sense, having been in this industry and in the business for many many years. Is life part of electrical activity? Aren't we electrical? Um, I'm not quite sure what you're saying. The, the, it's more like a question. The way, the way the brain works is that is that uh, you know we have our brains are full of neurons and and the, and the neurons um, consciousness uh, is is a, is a associated with uh, signals passing from one neuron to the other through. Uh, axons and synapses. Right, well, but I just thought it was interesting that you were talking about the electrical part. Are we electrical? You ever heard of the book, The Body Electric? Oh, n- no. You never heard of that book? No. You should read that book. It would definitely be an interesting book for you. <laughs> okay. So what happens with the families of the person? Do you operate as a cemetery or you have a cemetery license? <clears throat> Well, this is the way the state of Michigan has chosen to regulate us, and this is the category they've chosen to regulate us under. We, um, from my point of view, uh, we are not a cemetery. We are a hospital, um, and we're caring for patients. Um, but uh, from a legal point of view, we have to be, we are a cemetery in the sense that all the patients we're caring for are legally dead by the conventional definitions of death. So um, uh, as far as the families are concerned, uh, um, we, we have little boxes for flowers. Uh, since we're a cemetery, uh, some people do come and, and put flowers, uh, but uh, uh, I guess people go to hospitals and give flowers to, to people lying in the hospital as, as much as they do in cemeteries. So um, you can look at it from that point of view. Has the business grown over the last 10, 20 years? Are people becoming more open to life extension in the literal sense? I believe so. The, the life extension business, I believe, has, has grown terrifically uh, more rapidly than the cryonics business. The cryonics, cryonics um, growth uh, um, really was improved and increased by, at least for our company, for the Cryonics Institute, uh, there was a big jump in growth when the, when the uh, Internet became available because uh, people really weren't fi- 
defining us very well or knowing, hearing about us or learning about us or understanding what Crinix was all about uh, by by other means. But now we can make all that information available on the Internet and people can hear about us and go searching for us on the Internet. And um, their website is cryonics.org. And uh, any of your listeners that want to uh, learn about us can, are is certainly welcome to come and look at all the information we have on our website. And so once once the internet came along, there, there, there was a big there was a big growth spurt. And uh, but uh, it's it's the, the, it's for the last for the last um, oh, almost a decade. It, it's the the growth hasn't been um, it hasn't been exponential. That's what you might think about the growth of life extension. I think the life extension industry as a whole has grown exponentially, but as far as cryonics is concerned, it's it's grown, but it's grown linearly and it's a straight line rather than uh, an, uh, exponentially an upward sloping curve. It's not curved. It just seems to be we seem to get about the same number of of new members each year. So it's nice that we're growing. We are growing, but. Um, it's not like what what the singularity people talk about. Now, maybe something will happen. Or there'll be some change of perception. Something's going to happen, and and it will start to become exponential. Uh, I hope so. But at the moment, it just it just uh, we seem to get about the same number of new people, new members each year. I think what's also part of the complexity surrounding cryonics is that most people have a fixed mindset about lifespan for themselves or what they've heard or what they've come to expect. And so the thought of wanting to be around in the future and to be part of a future beyond a traditional life course is already a stretch. And then to not close this chapter and say, when my heart stops, and I'm, quote, legally pronounced dead, I have the option to go into suspended animation. And with improvement with medicine and science to come back and to even have that thought, that mindset is something that I would imagine nine out of 10 people don't even know can happen. A, B would be probably hard pressed or a little challenged about it just because not familiar. It's a foreign paradigm. And then there's this whole thing about what I asked you in the beginning, what makes somebody dead, and could they come out like they could a coma? And you explain that really well. Well, but, I, I, one of the questions I, I ask people to see what their possible potential interest is would be in cryonics. One of the questions I very often ask is, uh, if you could live as long as possible, uh, how long would you like to live? And very often the answer I hear is, I've never thought about it. Uh, That's a great question. Yeah, and uh, but you know there, uh, but uh, <clears throat> although a lot of people just it doesn't occur to them, and a lot of them it doesn't occur to them also. It's a very foreign concept for most people: the idea that aging can be eliminated, or re- or that rejuvenation is possible. Um, and, and that's that's a, that's a pretty key part of the whole program. You know, if you think you're going to come back as a as a decrepit old person, uh, it's not going to be very appealing to you. In a way, to be willing to go through the cryonics process is to hedge and to bet on present and future discoveries and medical breakthroughs and science breakthroughs and health breakthroughs and life extension breakthroughs so that rejuvenation and youthfulness and health are the norm. Exactly, yes. Exactly. And that's really what it is. It's a bet, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 a bet. It's a, it's a it's also it's a belief too. It's I mean it's not just it's just not just um it's just not just a pig and a poke. Uh it's I think it, it's someone who understands what what uh, you know the, the molecular basis of of diseases and the molecular basis of aging uh, can understand that that these are just just uh, forms of damage, and that uh, they're all they're forms of damage that can potentially be repaired. 
very exciting when